Jeff, good to see you again. Thanks, David. Good Thanks to see for you. participating in the forum this year. It's always good always, to see you. Always happy to do it. So uh, a few years ago, you launched your own firm. Correct. Uh, Three years ago, two weeks ago. Yeah. Three years ago, two years, two weeks ago. Very <laughs> right. good. So uh, just curious, when you when you're when you're you know managing your firm, um, you've been in the business for twenty years or so. Yeah. Um, what 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 things have you learned about? the markets have you been able to translate to running your own business? Anything carry over? Well, one of the reasons why we started RENMAC was to um, really be able to broaden out just beyond the traditional role of, of technical. Right. Um, and that gets pigeonholed, I think, you know, unfairly yeah. into just price and volume and, you know, you can't do anything else. And so as you start to, you know, look at other factors that might help you, particularly, you know, with the, the um, you know, the forum uh, subject of fusion, um, you know, we look at a lot of different things, and sometimes people thought you were stepping on their toes, or particularly if you had a better idea than they did, they didn't particularly like that. And so this is really an opportunity to be able to, to, to broaden and, you know, as I like to say, exert our horsepower um, and be able to drive it like a Porsche, you know, right, instead right. of a, a Volkswagen. And, and most of your own personal attention is still directed towards the technical side, or are you more we will always, yourself personally? Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I, I've always joked that uh, I'm, a, I'm a CMT and a CFA charter holder, and I always put the CMT first because it makes me more money. Right, right. Um, and that's true. I mean, we, we have always started with price, and we'll always continue to start with price. I think the you know the important thing for us is when you've got a market that's you know a momentum market and you've seen it pl plenty of times in your career you almost have too many opportunities right? right you don't know how to differentiate or distinguish them and and what this allows us to do is to sort of narrow our focus into something that's philosophical to our core sure. and then use the technicals as either position sizing right. um, price points um, you know initiation whatever the case may be right. So uh, recently, it's sort of a, a new endeavor in your business. You you launched uh, a trading desk, which is I'm sure no no small effort. Yeah, right. Um, so one of the th things that's really changed about the markets probably in the last ten years is just sort of dry up of volume. So are you, are you are you seeing that on your desk? Is it? Well, we're so young and and new that we're not. I mean, it's a growth business for us, and yeah, we're such a go. small portion of the you know overall volume, so it doesn't really have a, an impact. But um, you know, it's a it's a conduit. Um, it's a it's a mechanism that's easier for people to uh, to to conduct business with you. Um, and I think in this regulatory environment, the way that we looked at it, um, you know, with the uh, uh, the increased regulation, it was just something that to say you're a broker dealer automatically implies that you're going through certain levels of security and compliance, right. and you don't have to you know worry about those things if you're doing business broker to broker. Right. So it's a big part of it. Right. Um, I, I uh, for a, a number of years, had my own research business as well, and I, what I found uh, very interesting was that um, all of my clients were fundamentally oriented, so they were fundamental PMs or, or analysts. And I, I always found that interesting, talk about fusion analysis, so there was this demand from the fundamental, the guy with the you know boots on the ground trying to practice fundamental, fundamental yeah. analysis demanding technical research. Are you, what percentage of your clients are fundamental versus oh, technical and? It must be 95% of them, right? right? I mean, uh, and it's just the nature of the business, but I think, you know, it's a it's a fresh perspective, you know, and yeah. it's, a, it's a bit of a gut check, and right. I think that's important for people um, to, and, and the willingness to say, do I really need another strategist telling me something that's, you know, sort of what all the other ones are telling me, or should I look at, at this because it's such a different and fresh approach yeah. And the track record is pretty good. Um, you know, why not pay for that? And so we. That's why I, you know I, I will always, you know, until I go to the grave, um, start with start with price right. and the charts because it's just such an important. And frankly, while it's very obvious, it's still after all these years a differentiated look um, at the business. Right. You know, ninety. 95% of the street is um, is focused on differentiating themselves from a fundamental standpoint. Um, you know, that's a noble pursuit, but it's hard as hell. I mean, that's yeah. a, uh, there's a lot of people doing it. And so to the extent that we can add a different perspective, um, people are willing to pay for that. Right. Last question for you. Sure. So we've been sort of going sideways in the markets for a number of years here. And just curious what your, your take is on as to whether or not you think we're at the start of a new secular market, or is this something that... Do you think it requires more time before we can look back in this and say that that was the beginning of the I, next leg up? I think it's hard to make a a technical argument that you're not in a secular bull. You know, um, we've you know, you know, I've discussed the idea that the you know value line arithmetic index is at a new all-time yeah. new high, and if you go back and look at that, 
you know, when you're on a new high in that, that's usually a pretty good sign that yeah. you're in a... You know, it's not a bad a, thing. Yeah, you're in a bull yeah. phase. And, you know, look at what's working. And I think, you know, we, we hired an economist, Neil Dutta, at RenMac, and he's fantastic. And yeah, he one of the reasons why he's, he's so good is that he relates it to the market. It's not all this theoretical mumbo-jumbo. And it was very, you know, that was really my, my goal is to find somebody like that. And if you look at his work, and we talk about this, um, you know, we're still in the very early innings of the credit cycle. And so if you, you know, if you yeah. start thinking about that and applying it, I know people get all worked up that we're five years into the bull market. Geez, if you're a third inning of the credit cycle, you could be, you know, this could be the third inning of the bull market right. too, you know, which would imply 15 years. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think when you look at it technically, it makes sense. When you look at it from an economic standpoint and where the credit cycle is, it makes sense. Um, you know, there'll be there'll be variations to that, but by all means, I think that you have to give the benefit of the doubt to the the bull case, not the bear case. The Fed bought time. Fusion I think analysis they, right there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Fed bought time, and I think they they got exactly that. Exactly. So. Well, thanks, Jeff. Thanks, David. Thanks, thanks for good to see you. All right. you bet. Anytime. Yeah.